Welcome back to the Mountain Man Medical YouTube channel. Thanks for hanging out. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at something a little bit different than we usually talk about on this YouTube channel. Mostly we're concerned with bleeding control and trauma management in an emergency situation. I don't usually talk about pharmaceuticals, medications too often, but in this case, I think it's a really valuable thing to put in your trauma kit and it might even be free. So hang out, we're gonna talk about that next. So according to the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, they've been collecting data on the opioid epidemic here in the US for the last 10 to 15 years. They started collecting this data back in 1999, and they found that over a million people since then in the US have died from an overdose of opioids. In fact, the situation gets even worse when you start looking at the data and you realize that back in 2012, only 6% of 41,502 overdose deaths were from opioids. You fast forward back into 2021, and that number for the number of deaths that comes up to 106,699, and opioids make up 66% of those deaths. Before we get into what to do about this situation, let me go ahead and ask you to go down below, hit that like and subscribe button. That's a free way to support me here at the channel. So if you learned something, you got something out of this video, that's a free way to support me here. So this epidemic that we have of the opioid overdose crisis is something that's a big deal. A lot of this uh, opioids, fentanyl in particular, is coming up from Mexico from the cartels. They're using this to cut other types of drugs like heroin and meth into a longer lasting product. They're gonna to try to increase the potency of these recreational drugs and it's getting people killed. Now, something that you can do as a private citizen is to carry some naloxone or Narcan on your person or in your trauma kit in case you come across somebody who is ODing. This is especially important if you have somebody in your life who is using prescription opioids. They might take too much on accident or sometimes on purpose, and you need to have that ready so that you can step in and save their life with that Narcan if that becomes an issue for you. Additionally, having it staged in your trauma kit always there and on an option is something that you can do to kind of take care of those people who are around you who might need that in a pinch. So the reason why I want to talk about this today is most of the time I don't talk about medications, pharmaceuticals and that kind of thing because you need to know exactly what's going on with your casualty before you can use it. You need to be trained and you got to have some sort of medical background in order to be able to use these medications appropriately. Narcan is a little bit different. It's not going to injure your casualty if they aren't actually suffering from an opioid overdose. So if you give it to somebody and that's not really the problem that's affecting them, it's okay, it's not going to injure your casualty. But if they are suffering from an opiate overdose, then it's gonna save their life. So it's one of those things that it's kind of like a chest seal, right? A chest seal is just a sticky piece of rubber. If they don't really need a chest seal, no big deal. They just peel that chest seal off, they lose a little chest hair, and that's the end of the day. Narcan is very similar to that. If we use it and they didn't really need it, it's okay, the casualty is going to be just fine. So what is fentanyl and how does it work? So fentanyl is a part of a class of medication called an opioid. And one of the side effects of an opiate is that it depresses your respiratory system to the point where you'll stop breathing or you'll stop feeling the need to breathe. And as a result, you die from essentially suffocation. Your brain and all your vital organs are no longer getting the oxygen that they need to survive. And if this lasts for too long, you can start having massive damage to the brain and eventually it will lead to death. So what are some signs and symptoms of an opiate overdose? We wanna make sure that we understand clearly what we're dealing with so that we can use the right procedures and techniques to take care of our casualties. First and foremost, we wanna remember that since opiates are a respiratory depressant, we wanna start looking at their breathing. Do they have no breathing or a very slow, limited breathing. We also wanna be looking at their mental status. If we have somebody who has an altered mental status, they're not acting normally, appropriately, or correctly for the situation, we're gonna start thinking that maybe there's some drugs on board and it might be an opiate. So we need to pay attention to that. If we are observing our casually and we're noticed they have slow or absent breathing, then we're gonna know that their breathing is not working quite as well, and we're gonna see some other signs on top of that. We're gonna see bluish tint to their fingertips and especially to their lips and their face. If they have a, a darker color of skin, we wanna make sure that we pull back and look 
at the inside of their lip at that mucosal membrane, and that'll give us a good indication of exactly what we're dealing with. If we're seeing a whitish bluish tint instead of a nice pink and red healthy glow, then we're gonna know that there is some sort of a problem in the oxygen delivery system. And if we see no other types of wounds, no other indication of something that might have caused this, then we can start to kind of suspect that this might be an opiate overdose. Another clue might help you out is if there are any bystanders, anybody who knows that casually, we can ask around, hey, does this person take any drugs? Especially ask, does he take any narcotics or opiates? That will be something that you can collect from nearby bystanders who might know the casualty. Now, you might not always get an honest answer, especially if we're dealing with illicit drugs, but it would be beneficial to at least ask those questions so that we know what we're dealing with in this situation. And the last two signs and symptoms that we're going to see is we're going to see a decrease in their blood pressure and we're gonna see pinpoint pupils. So when you look, you're gonna pull open their eyelid and you're gonna take a look and you should see just a pinpoint instead of a dilated open pupil. That's a great indication that this casualty is undergoing an opiate overdose and we need to use Narcan to bring them out of that. All right, so we kind of understand the problem a little bit, what we're dealing with, some signs and symptoms, and now we're gonna talk about some of the treatment plans. First, we need to call 911. We need more help as quickly as possible. We need an ambulance on scene with medical professionals who have everything that they need to take care of our casualty. Now they're gonna have their own Narcan on their rig, which is great. And they're also going to have oxygen that they can use to supply that casualty with an abundance of that needed oxygen that they're gonna to need to survive. So we need to get 911 called and in route as quickly as possible. The second thing that we're going to do is we're gonna assess their mental status. We're gonna do a sternal rub, we're gonna take our knuckles and we're gonna drag it up and down on the casualty sternum nice and aggressively. This is gonna hurt. That's the whole point of a sternal rub is that that should bring the casualty around. We should get some sort of a response from them. It might be them waking up and saying, hey, what the heck, dude, I was just taking a nap, or it might be just a groan. If we don't get any kind of response, we're gonna know that this casualty is really struggling and is in a bad place and we need to take care of them fast. Next, we're going to observe the eyes. If we see that they are nice and dilated, then we're going to know that this is probably not a narcotics overdose. This might mean that it's just cardiac in nature. So we need to have somebody, a bystander, hopefully if you have them nearby, run and get an AED so that we can get this attached to the casualty as quickly as possible while you begin CPR. If you don't know CPR, I highly recommend that you go and find a source. The American Red Cross is a great place for that. So go ahead and check them out and get CPR certified so you know how to do that. Additionally, if you open their eyelids and you see that you have this pinpoint pupil, then we're gonna to start to be suspecting an overdose of some kind. And we're going to need to start chest compressions anyway. We're gonna to have to get blood moving through the body as quickly as possible to deliver that life-giving oxygen where it needs to go. So we might need an AED to take care of this situation as well. The second thing we're gonna be considering is making sure that we have an open and patent airway. We wanna make sure that they're laying in a way that they can breathe easily. A good place for this is the recovery position. This is a good way for them to make sure that their tongue is not falling into the back of their throat and occluding or closing up their airway. And on top of that, if they vomit and they throw up, it's gonna go away from their body and they're not gonna pull that aspirate it back down into the lungs and choke on it. So the recovery position is an awesome place to put somebody who is ODing, and we wanna make sure that we're keeping that airway open and clear so they can bring in as much oxygen as possible to keep them alive. If we see pinpointed pupils, we have a decreased respiration rate and an altered mental status, we're gonna to need to administer our Narcan. We're gonna put it in one of the nostrils, on either side, you don't need to close the nose and we're just going to push that and let that go into the nostril to start working as you need to. If you have a nasal pharyngeal airway in your trauma kit, this might be the option for you to put that in. So apply the Narcan first and then drop in your NPA to help keep that airway nice and open. Now, can you just pop it straight down the tube and into the system? No, I don't recommend that. That medication needs to be administered through the mucosal membranes inside of the nostrils so that the drug gets to where it needs to go. So go ahead and pop them with it first and then drop in your NPA to ensure it gets where it needs to go and you're getting the most benefit. Now, we're gonna be thinking a lot about a depressed respiratory drive, which means they're not gonna to wanna to breathe on their own. We might need to do that for them. 
A pocket mask is one of those great options that you can kind of keep in your trauma kit. It's very small, very inexpensive, and will help to provide kind of a barrier between yourself and the casualty that you're working on. Now, this is more for your benefit and not so much for the casualties, right? We're not super concerned about the casualty at the moment because they're already dying. So we need to do something to help them. But this mask is pretty important for you as the first responder because it's a barrier to keep vomit if that casualty decides to puke in the middle of you giving them respirations or rescue breaths then we want to make sure we have something in the way so that doesn't go into uh, our mouth because that would be really gross uh, not the end of the world it's happened before many many times in the old days back before they had these types of procedures and equipment that happened all the time um, but these days we can uh, find a way around it so maybe think about that now that we've gotten the situation taken care of, we've administered one Narcan dose. We want to see if that is going to take effect. In three to five minutes, we don't see any sort of effect. We're going to want to hit them with a second dose. So having two doses in your trauma kit might be a good idea, depending on what it is that you're doing. Next, we want to make sure that we're keeping our casualty nice and warm. If they're laying out on the cold ground, then they're going to start to get a chill pretty quick. And if their body's not functioning correctly, then it could lead to hypothermic state. So we want to be monitoring our casualty and making sure that we're keeping them nice and warm until help can arrive. Especially if we're out there on a cold, windy, or a rainy day, let's get that casualty inside into the cab of a truck, start a fire, wrap them in blankets and coats, and monitor them closely to make sure that they aren't becoming hypo or hyperthermic. And the last piece of advice that I'll have for you on administering this is that when you hit somebody with that Narcan and they decide to come back awake, they might come back awake aggressive. So we want to make sure that we're keeping that in the back of our minds. Our casualty could become a threat to us. If we're working on somebody who has weapons on them, we want to remove those weapons and take them to a safe place so that they don't get used on us or somebody else. So keep that in mind. Anybody that you're working on could eventually become a threat to you and everybody nearby. Just keep it in the back of your mind and be prepared for it if you need to uh, wrestle somebody. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. I'm gonna leave you with one last thing. This Narcan is actually becoming a lot more popular and because of a few events that have happened in the past couple of years, a lot more people are starting to understand the value of Narcan and to recognize that it's not quite so dangerous that us common civilians cannot have access to it. In fact, there are a number of programs located around the US where you can get Narcan for free. Um, at the very least, it's now becoming legal for you to purchase it over the counter. It can be a little bit expensive, but again, this is one of those items that will definitely save somebody's life. So if you have that on you and you have the wherewithal to put it in your trauma kit, I highly recommend it. I'm going to drop a link to goodrx.com that has a list of all of the places where you can get Narcan for free. Thanks for checking out this video. Head over to mountainmanmedical.com and check out our Yellowstone and Wind River Trauma Kits. Be ready for whatever the mountain throws at you. I'll catch you guys in the next one.